Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. So yeah, my name is Dr. Resch, and I am a clinical psychologist. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about happiness. And it's pretty common for us to wonder about happiness and what's going to bring us happiness in our lives. Um, it's pretty common for people to ask themselves, am I happy? What do I need to do to be happy? Um, have you ever asked some of these other questions I have up here? Do you have any control over your ability to be happy? Is any of your happiness genetically in, you know, inherited? Have you ever asked that? And how much of your happiness is due to your circumstances, right? For example, the lack of target here, right? <laughs> um, have you ever wondered um, how much influence these things have over our happiness? And I'm gonna to try to answer some of those questions today, but first, I wanna share a little story about this obviously happy guy right here. Does anyone know who um, that gentleman on, on uh, the right holding that trophy up is? Does anyone know who that is? No? So his name is J.R. Martinez, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about J.R. Martinez. In 2002, um, he was a recently graduated teenager, loved football, his family was from Central America, and um, he decided that he wanted to join the army. Uh, he wanted to give back to the country that had given him so much. So he joined the army and was assigned to the 101st Airborne as an 11 Bravo, an infantryman. And shortly after joining, he was deployed to Iraq. And very soon after getting to Iraq, he was driving a Humvee um, on a mission one day and his Humvee hit an uh, improvised explosive device, and he was severely injured. Uh, he was medevaced from Iraq to Germany, and then from Germany to uh, Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio. And there he spent three years. Um, he underwent over 30 surgeries uh, and skin grafts um, because over one third of his body was severely burned, right? And obviously this picture takes place after all that, right? And so how did he get from that experience, this emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically overwhelming experience where your life is totally un and utterly changed in a blink of an eye? How did he get from there to here? Um, he decided he wanted to flourish. He decided that he did, didn't just want to survive, but he really wanted to be happy. Um, he wanted to be the best possible version of himself. And so he did a lot of different things. He started serving others, um, other burn victims, and helping them through their process. He became a motivational speaker. Um, he became very involved in charity and other altruistic efforts. And he's, he's influenced thousands of people in a very positive way around the world. He also became an actor on a, a soap opera, and I, I can't remember which one, because I don't watch soap operas. But I'm sure he did a good job, and that's how he got on Dancing with the Stars. And this is him winning Dancing with the Stars, right? He married, he has a child, right? Um, so at 18 years old, he went from that horrific experience to really flourishing. And what is it about J.R. Martinez that allows him to do this? How, how did he overcome this, right? Um, and so I wanna try to answer that a little bit today because I think it's really applicable to all of our lives. Uh, so Benjamin Franklin once said, and I'm sure everyone has heard this before, uh, that nothing is certain in life but death and taxes. Have you guys all heard that before, right? And it's tax season, so it's certainly uh, true for all of us that taxes are certain. Um, but I think that he was wrong, if I can, if I can say that. Benjamin Franklin was wrong. Um, because I think there's one other thing that is certain in our lives is that our lives are going to change all the time. And sometimes this change is for the good, and sometimes this change is for the bad. Sometimes we see the change coming. Um, and sometimes we don't see the change coming. It's quite unexpected, right? Sometimes we choose the, the changes in our life, and these, these choices uh, 
bring a lot of trials to our life. And I'll talk a little bit about, uh, more about that in a minute. And so going back to those um, questions I asked previously, is our happiness, our ability to be happy, inherited? Like, for example, height, right? Height, we know, is 90% genetic, right? So if you're short, you can literally blame this on your parents. Okay, that is definitely one thing that's your parents' fault, all right? Um, but what about our happiness? And, and then, again, how much do our circumstances, the external environment that we find ourselves in, how much does that play a role? And it turns out that this has been studied increasingly over the past several decades. So I'm going to show you this little pie chart up here. And um, this uh, doctor, and I put her name up here because it's too difficult for me to pronounce, so you guys can just read it. Uh, her and her colleagues at the University of Cal California Riverside estimate that about 50% of our um, happiness is due to gene variations, it's due to genetics. And 10% is due to our circumstances we find ourselves in, sort of that external environment. And 40% is under our control. So the genetic part is, is not gonna change. It's set, um, we're not, we don't have any ability to sort of change what our genetic code is, right? So I'm gonna um, take that out and sort of redistribute this pie chart so it looks like this. Um, and now we have our circumstances, 20% of our happiness depends on our circumstances, and 80% is under our control. And this is a very important finding, and that's why I put a smiley face there, because this should make all of us very happy, because if we're going to be happy, we have a tremendous amount of say whether that's going to happen, all right? And so let's talk about that a little bit. And first I have a question for everyone. So this guy's happy, right? It's raining money. I, I wanna know where he lives, where it rains money. Um, raise your hand if you think you would be, okay, raise your hand if you would like to win the lottery. Let's, let's ask that. Like if you woke up tomorrow and were like, you'd won the lottery and you were instantly rich, right? Pretty much everyone raised their hand. There's always someone that's like, no, no, I don't want to win the lottery. But I don't, you need to come see me later. Um, I don't get that. <laughs> okay, so everyone said that they'd like to win the lottery. Now, here's another question. Would winning the lottery make you happy? Raise your hand if you think winning the lottery would make you happy. You're shaking your head no back there. You're saying yes. Yeah. Why are you saying no? I'm just curious. For me, money is just a, an outward thing. Um, it's not to make people want to talk about money for me and all these other things. It's not going to make me inherently happy. For me, that's a religious thing. All right. So you, if you woke up tomorrow and had a million extra dollars in your bank account, do you think you'd be happier tomorrow than you are today? No, because I don't think it's going to solve my problem. All right, all right. You are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you also are kind of right, and we're, we're going to talk about that too. So this has actually been looked at. So there's a very interesting study done um, about four decades ago in 1978 by a researcher by the name of oh, let me go on, by the, a researcher by the name of Phil Brickman. All right, he did a really interesting study um, where he actually looked at lottery winners and he researched them, um, but he also looked at individuals that it had experienced a spinal cord injury and were paralyzed, right? And as you would expect, the people who won the lottery and suddenly had this you know, newfound fortune, they experience a, an immediate and pretty significant increase in their life satisfaction, their, their level of happiness, right? That makes sense. And as you would expect, the people that um, had a, a spinal cord injury and were paralyzed, their life satisfaction had an immediate um, and pretty significant drop, right? That makes sense, right? The question is, and I think this is kind of what you were getting at, over the long term, what happens? So with the lottery winners, it turns out that a year later, they had all returned to their pre-lottery winning level of happiness, right? So they became rich, and sure enough, it made them happy temporarily, but a year later, 
um, they had returned to their pre-lottery winning level of happiness. Now the individuals that were paralyzed, similarly, they were also recovering. They were coming back up to their pre-injury level um, uh, of happiness. But they weren't quite there after a year. It was taking them a little longer, but they're definitely um, finding joy in life again. They were experiencing life satisfaction. They were becoming happy again, right? Very interesting study. And like any good scientific study, this spurred a lot of other um, uh, studies and, and it raised a lot of questions about happiness and our ability to adapt. And we learned a lot. We learned that we tend to adjust to positive things in our life quicker than we adjust to negative things. For example, um, we buy a house and we're initially very excited to have this new house, but a few months later, the reality of a mortgage sets in and um, remodeling projects and yard work, right? And so we sort of adjust to that. We come back down a little bit. Um, we also know that uh, when bad things happen to us, we'll take a hit and it takes us a little bit longer to, to get back up. Uh, it takes us a little bit longer to adjust, but we do adjust, right? And part of that is because 50% is, is genetic, right? Um, we also uh, learn from this that our circumstances don't have nearly as powerful an influence over our life and our happiness as we think they do, right? Um, we know that um, if, like I was saying before, if suddenly th there was a target here, right? That was, wouldn't just make us happy, right? And if we think that would, that's a problem, right? Because um, that's just simply not true. Um, so this is all, I think, really interesting um, and, and good, good news that, this, that, that all this science is teaching us that we're, that we're learning more and more over the past few de um, decades. It would be quite disheartening to learn that um, our happiness was out of our control. I, I would be completely um, out of a job, right? If I didn't believe that humans could change their behavior, could change the way they feel, there would be no need for someone like me, right? Um, and so, very interesting study. We've learned a lot from it. And um, I want to finish by giving a, a few uh, tips on how we can kind of achieve happiness in our life, even when things aren't going our way, all right? But first, we need to talk about the purpose of life, all right? Now, I know that wasn't on the agenda, but I think we need to talk about it, all right? So this is uh, something that people often think about, right? Why are, you know, what is the purpose of life? And if I said to you, the purpose of life is to seek pleasure and avoid pain, or at least that's one of the purposes of life, does that make sense to everyone? We should seek pleasure and avoid pain? It, it makes sense, right? Like, we should do things that bring a smile to our face, avoid those things that don't bring a smile to our face. So on its surface, it seems pretty clear. Unfortunately, some pain in life is unavoidable. And that's the real issue. So there's pain in life that's unavoidable. And there's, and there's pain and challenges in life that we choose to go through, right? If you choose to get married, if you choose to have children, if you choose to join the military, um, if you choose uh, to go to school, to go to college, you are choosing to bring challenges into your life. Does that make sense, right? And we can't avoid that. That's a part of life. Um, there's other painful things in life that are unavoidable. I imagine all of us in this room have experienced loss in our life, a death of a loved one, or a pet, or something like that, right? That's really hard to deal with. Sometimes it's expected. It's uh, maybe an, a grandparent, and so we sort of um, expect for it to happen. Sometimes it's very unexpected. It's always hard to deal with, right? So pain is a part of life, and, and, we, um, and this is what I mean by life changes, and sometimes it changes in a good way, sometimes it changes in a bad way, right? And we have to learn to approach that pain and deal with it. It is a part of life. I will say, however, and I kind of preempted this slide a little bit, but 
there is some pain um, that's not good, and that's unavoidable pain, like this guy right here, right? Um, we should avoid unnecessary pain. Do you guys know what Darwin Awards are? You guys ever? Yeah. So this guy is about to win a Darwin Award. Um, so drinking and driving, for example, that's, that's unnecessary pain, right? M making a bad choice like that. Um, we should avoid that. Um, but the other type of pain and challenges in our life, we, we need to learn to deal with, and we can. And so I want to finish today by, by giving three suggestions. So there's a, there's a psychologist at the University of Pennsylvania named Dr. Um, Revich, Karen Revich, and she calls this the triad of resilience. And so she's studied resilient people, people that have had to overcome tremendous challenges, traumatic events, people like J.R. Martinez, right? And she has found that they share three characteristics. These people that are very resilient share three characteristics. And the first one is what we call task-oriented task coping. And task-oriented coping means that every day um, we wake up and we say to ourselves, what am I going to do today? What am I going to accomplish today to take the next step forward, to move my life forward, right? Um, oftentimes, we get caught up in these very long-term goals we have, which, which is great. Um, but we need to focus, especially when we're going through hard times, we need to focus on what can we do today? What is a small incremental step we can do today? That's task-oriented coping. The second thing <clears throat> is that people that are really resilient and persevere, they have what psychologists call an internal locus of control. And that's basically a fancy way of saying that they believe that they can change their lives. They believe that they can change their lives that they're not just being acted upon by sort of um, outside powers, that they can make decisions to change their life. So very, very important. And then the, the last thing is that um, resilient people use their connections with others, right? Um, they know that sometimes life is too difficult to get through by themselves. They need to lean on others sometimes. So they use those connections. And not only that, they create new connections. They get involved in the community um, and uh, they get out of their, com their, their comfort zone. They take risks, right? So these three things we know are characteristics of people that are able to overcome challenges. Pretty simple, right? It's not real difficult uh, science or anything like that. And I think it, it, it's very harmonious with what Dr. Jett was talking about, the sort of the biological basis of stress. Um, so I want to leave all of you with a challenge. I, I want to challenge you all um, that you do these things, that you, particularly when you're going through tough times, because tough times, I, I'm guessing there's probably people in this room right now that are going through really tough times. And if you're not, just wait a few days, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, so I want to challenge all of you to remember these things and do these things. Wake up every day and say, what am I going to accomplish today? What small thing? Um, believe that you can change, you can make decisions to change your life. Remember, 80% of your happiness you control by the decisions you make, by learning to think healthy, behave healthy. And then don't think you need to go through this life alone, right? Use your connections with others. Very rarely will you need to come see me, right? Someone like me. Most of the time, you're going to be able to use your, your own resources, your family, friends, coworkers, stuff like that. Sometimes you may need to come see me, and that's OK. Um, we're definitely here to help. I promise you, if you do these things, um, if you're willing to take risks, expose some weaknesses, put yourself out there a little bit, I promise you, if you do these things, your life will be hard but it will be full and engaging. And I think also that you'll be happy most of the time. Um, enjoy your Fighter Wing Friday. Thank you for letting me come talk to you guys today.